Good afternoon and welcome to Live With Art with me, Anna Gammons. Uh, how's everyone feeling? I hope everyone's got that sort of Friday feeling again. It's Friday at 4pm, really nice time to um, be speaking about artworks. Um, and goodness me, do I have a fantastic guest for you today. I've been very uh, much looking forward to chatting with him. Um, today I am going to be speaking to the internationally renowned artist Christian Hook, uh, originally from Gibraltar. Christian's work, he's a visual artist, he's an oil painter. Um, he kind of gained international recognition after um, winning Sky Arts Landscape Artist of the Year in 2014, but he does work with a multitude of other galleries as well. Um, his work's absolutely phenomenal, so phenomenal in fact, that Sky Arts just produced a documentary on his work, Painting the Invisible, released in October. If you haven't already watched it, then you definitely, definitely should. Um, very, very excited to be speaking to him. So um, yeah, I'm wait just waiting for him to join the conversation. Hopefully uh, he will be in soon. We're gonna be speaking about this new collection of work. We're gonna be speaking about the process behind it, the scientists that he spoke to. Uh, we're gonna be thinking of, here we go. I can see you, Christian. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we're going to be speaking about the ideas behind it, we're going to be speaking about the work itself uh, and we're going to be speaking about um, some other works that Christian's done as well in the past. Um, really, really looking forward to it. I'm going to request, uh, here we go, request to join uh, into the conversation. Hopefully the connection's all good, you never really know with these live conversations. Hey, Christian, hi. Hello there. Let me Thank see you so much. <laughs> it's one second one second let me just there you go just adjusting everything this always happens when we can speak live me? i can, can see you i can see you and i can hear you and i'm delighted right, you're joining right. me from gibraltar as well where it's so much sunnier Indeed. than it is here <laughs> <laughs> thank you for joining me I, I just introduced uh i introduced you in your work i explained that the sky have just done a documentary painting the invisible which accompanies a new collection of work that you have just completed so Question, okay. I suppose, sorry, what were you going <laughs> to say? I was going to say, sorry, I think there's a bit of a delay, but um, I was going to say oh. that, uh, why don't we start with an easy question, uh, Christian? I think for those of you who don't know who you are, which I expect there to be very few people, um, how did you become an artist? What's your background? Um, so I always was interested in art since a uh, you know, very early age because I, uh, I'm a hypersensitive, so like all artists are, you know. Um, so I, you know, fall in love with a song, fall in love with like some thing that I've seen. I, I just like was extremely, uh, you know, uh, fascinated with uh, with everything, you know, everything that was uh, creative in any way. Yeah. So you know, I was dying to play the guitar, dying to like try stuff, dying to <laughs> do all these things. But then all the logical stuff, you know, <laughs> which other people tend to find so easy. <laughs> was like really difficult for me so i got through everything but it was a nightmare and um and anyway like i started uh, i went to to i studied uh, technical and scientific illustration first uh, uh, in the uk and then i went to the royal college of arts and i became a tutor there so i was a you know a lecturer there for a while and then after mm -hmm. that i basically i came back to gibraltar i became a teacher and i was like uh, uh, painting all the time and uh, you know one day a gallery came over and said look you, do you want to try something out in London so um, they asked me for like 40 pieces a year or something so I said no I don't want to do it and I stayed here but then but then something something amazing happened because uh, uh, you know I carried on working I was working for I think I worked for about I don't know about eight years like mm -hmm. solid every day before I even tried to um, sell anything or do anything. I think I, I, I worked on the same piece as well. It was on top, you know, every, every time painting on top, on top. Yeah, but it, I, would, I would paint it, the whole piece in white and start again and then start again and start again. But the reason was because if I have different works, I, I would, if I would have had different pieces of work, mm. um, I think I would have had at some point the the urge to show it, you know, or to do something with it. Mm -hmm. And then my own development would stop, you know. So I decided to continue working on the same piece of board until it was like that thick, you know. And then I'd start another one 
And during those eight years or nine years, or I can't remember how long it was, it was a long time. I, I mm-hmm. just worked on the same piece of work, like all the time. Yeah. Like I would yeah. do life drawings, everything on top. And the one day I thought I was ready, this gallery came, I said no. And then I, I entered this prize in the UK and I won it. And it was like a week exhibition, like a week's exhibition for the same gallery, you know? And I thought, I can't believe oh this. And um, anyway, so I, I, I suddenly decided, you know, once I was ready, I decided to sell everything, to leave everything. And I went to a travel lodge with a suitcase <clears throat> and I would take the TV off the travel lodge and paint from there. Oh and I didn't God. have any idea what I was doing. I spent like a, a, a while like that, like kind of, kind of almost like a homeless, you know? Yeah. And, um, and suddenly, you know, like I started entering competitions and one year I won, I think on the first year I won like uh, 10 international prizes in London. I like uh, I mean... the first exhibition sold out. Then I won the sky thing. Then I, and then from then, you know, everything else just happened suddenly. And I just, mm. it was like, I was ready and I went and it just happened, you know, it was, uh, you know, yeah. it just, uh, just happened that way. <laughs> I feel like you're the sort of person there who is just, as you said, hi- hyper, you are maybe hypersensitive, but hyper creative and everything you touch kind of turns to gold. <laughs> almost. Um, it's quite magic, um, really, your talent. But um, I want to, I've got a quote here from your website, which I'd love to talk to you about, because it says, quote, yeah. as soon as it starts going well, I completely destroy it which yeah. I thought was absolutely fascinating. This yeah. is kind of a technique that you have of, of painting and art. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Because that sounds yeah, counterproductive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I think that, that, that humanity in general, you know, like people are uh, drawn to anything that's, uh, anything that's new. I mean, everything that happens, right, that we all suddenly, like when Facebook was new, when Instagram was new, when mm. newness is something that we're all like, you know, we don't want the sameness. We don't want it. We reject, like humans reject mm-hmm. it. Like for a little while, it's okay. But then we're, everybody's waiting <laughs> for something. And, um, yeah. you know, I think art is uh, very misconstrued in, in education because, um, you know, people think that if they don't paint or they don't become a sculptor or like a painter or something that they're not artists, you know? Mm. And, um and you know even when you're painting you have like landscape portraits or 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 still life or i mean it's all nonsense i mean that's not art that's rubbish like really (laughs) art is really the new Mm. creating stuff and to create something if you're going to create something new it has to be new i mean it has to be something that nobody knows whether it's good or bad because you are attempting something you've got to fail you've got to like you know you've got to You've got to, I mean, I fail, I mean, my, my process is failure in, in, in every sense of it, you know, I, I, I make as many mistakes as I can. And then the next day when I walk in the studio, some parts is like new. Mm-hmm. I could have never, ever, I mean, if someone asks me, how did you do that? I mean, sometimes I go through the exhibitions and I see the work again and I have no idea how anything <laughs> happened. You know, it's like, I cannot believe it, but sometimes <laughs> I go and I see the works together and I'm thinking like, like, you know, that's not bad, you know, like I could never, I could never do that. But it's because, it's because I have embraced the idea of failure as the whole success part. Like, so as soon as a painting is going well, it's time to leave it. You know, it's, there's no way I'm going to carry on with that because, because it's already kind of um, lost its, its, it's lost its possibility, you know. And mm-hmm. the possibility has to be complete failure. So, so if you don't have fun with it, you've got to put music on and go for it and you know, destroy it and just go mad with it. And then in that madness, I mean, you can't see things immediately. So you have to leave and then come back. But when you come back, some part will be like exciting. If you use the wrong materials, the wrong... I mean, I use all the wrong brushes. I've invented like half of my tools. I don't use canvas anymore. My primers are from shops that have nothing to do with art. I mean, I use so little, I use extremely little art equipment. Like I, I like half of the stuff I've got is just, you know, like stuff that I've made or whatever. And, um, you know, every little bit helps to give you that, that, that surprise, you know, and you cannot surprise yourself if you know what you're doing. If I know that I'm gonna hold my hand and go here and do something, 
there's not going to be any surprise there. So to surprise ourselves, we've got to set it up so that like you make as many mistakes as you possibly can to then like think, wow, that's like, I could have never done that. And that is the beginning you know, of something. If not, you just like, you know, if not, you just, uh, you know, as soon as you start thinking of like, what are other people going to like? Is this going to sell? Mm. Is this going to be good? Is this going to be bad? Is this, you're lost. Forget it. Just get your things and leave, and leave the room because that is like the worst. I mean, how are you going to go? I mean, if you're going to please everyone, right? You know, there are other jobs for that. But if you want to become an artist, right, then you've got to please. You. You've got to do something that means something to you. Even, even the subject matter, like, uh, do you think people are going to like flowers? I mean, who cares if they like flowers or whatever? Do you like flowers? Do you like, what do you like? And what are you interested in, you know? What yeah, are you interested in yes. yourself? What is it, what is it that is, I think that the question before anything else, before you research anything or start doing something, I mean, it's much more fun if it's something that means something to you. And I don't mean like, you know, that I love my dog. I mean, as in like something that, 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 that perturbs you, for example, or something that you don't understand and you think, why the hell does this have to happen to me all the time? A real thing that like you are already like battling with all your life. So you, you've got like a relationship with it already. Then working on that is for you is not uh, any big deal because, because it's part of your, of your, it's part of your life, you know? And therefore, why are you then going to go and paint flowers? Or why mm. are you then going to do a portrait? I mean, it doesn't mm. make sense. It makes sense to take that thing that really, that really perturbs you or excites you, whatever it is, and work on that, you know? And, and then thousands of people will, will resonate with, what, with your work because even if they don't understand it immediately, you know, once they start looking at, at, the, at the collective or the idea or the concept underneath it, you know, and also the subject matter will make you develop work which is different because the subject has never been, maybe never been tackled before, maybe in painting or in any other form, you know. Mm. And also the idea of using a brush, a square canvas. I mean, why a square canvas? Why a brush? Why oil paints? I mean, why the hell would we use oil paints? I mean, yeah. do you use oils? Yet? What make are they? I mean, who cares? Like, the only thing that matters is like also, you know, you listen to a song by someone and suddenly someone's using a, a wooden box to do the drums or something. Who cares? Do you like the song or not? Yes. It's a great song. End of story. It doesn't matter who played what. It doesn't matter who did what. It doesn't matter if the person can sing or not. The point is that at the end they created like an amazing thing and that's all that matters. The rest doesn't, it's all a load of nonsense, you know? So, it, so yeah, it sounds, firstly, gosh, there's so many things I want to say. Um, uh, it sounds like you, you're taking away all the convention, uh, all, all of the safety nets, all of the conventions. And, and yeah. I, I suppose that's what makes your work not only very authentic and original, um, but also why nobody's come close to doing quite what you do, uh, especially in, you know, in, the, in, the, in today, in, in the society we live in now. Yeah. Do you think that's why you're so successful then? Because you don't... Um, pander to opinion. You really, you really are your own, your own critic. I think. I, uh, I think so. I think two things. One is, uh, um, one one is that I I I don't care really, and, and I mean it. I don't. I didn't care ever about um, about whether I make a living or whether I live comfortably or whether whatever. You know, I, mm -hmm. I for a long time I couldn't buy a burger from a McDonald's. You know, I didn't have. I, I remember one time I went to the Natural History Museum to draw and I, I, I needed 20p more to buy like a big Burger King or something. And I just had to go home like because I didn't. Oh, I mean, no, no, but my point is that is this, right? Like, um, yes, you can do something else. Yes, you can have a better job. Yes, you can. But if you can do enough just to live in a small room to sleep and you have any place, even if it's outdoors, to paint. If you do what you like and you go for it 100%, you grab the bull by the horns and you do not fear anything because whatever you have to do, you're going mm. to do it. Like, mm. if you don't do it that way, then, like, then it's like, uh, okay, if it doesn't go well, I'll go back and become this. If it doesn't go... So you, put, you have one foot at the back and another foot in the door and you can't do anything like that. You, you've got to... You've got to like completely be fearless and just go for stuff. And, that's it. and if the result is that you're living in the streets, 
will live in the streets. You know, mm. buy a tent. But do it, you know, like go, go for it, you know, like complete, you know. Mm. Validating, I think, and probably quite reassuring to a lot of artists out there who, um, who might be thinking, gosh, maybe I should have a kind of backup or am I really doing the right thing? But you make a very yeah. valid point. If you're doing what you love, then yeah. you will be successful. Um, it, I mean, regardless sorry, of financial. I did, no, I, did ha- I did have, I, for example, I didn't ever like uh, leave my job like until I'm saying leave my job to give me enough money to pay a rent. Mm. I didn't leave my job for that until I was making money from my art, you know? Like mm. the idea of trying to make money with art is the worst idea on the planet because it stops you from doing whatever you want. The whole point, mm. like people want to see what you are doing, you, not like, not like what everybody wants to know, what's gonna sell or not. What can you do? If I give you an orange or if I give you a ball, or if I give you whatever, what can you do with it? Like, and then suddenly, well, you do something and that is you. If you're not in the paintings, if you're not in the sculptures, if you're not in the work, if you're not in whatever, then you're not there. Like, you know, you're just doing stuff for, it's the wrong way. Like, you've got to, so in order to be able to do that, in order to be able to do whatever you want, like something has to pay your rent, you know? So, so mm-hmm. that little bit, you can say, right, I'm going to work, even if it's in a shop, it doesn't matter where, enough. And then the rest of your time is 100% dedicated to this. And eventually, eventually, if you continue, like something will happen. Like if you go mm-hmm. for it, I'm saying. Once you're taken in, then that's it. Once you're taken in by something and you start it, then you can leave everything and really, like I think I had, like in the first five years that I did this, I think, I think it's more than five years. I think I had like two days off, you know? I was in the Gosh. studio from nine in the morning till like 11 at night. And I don't regret it because because that's what it takes like to get some to do to create something of value you need to put in mm. you need to put in the time you know you Absolutely. can't you can't yeah and and the paintings themselves determine how long they take it's not or oh, whatever works you're doing you know it, it's not it, it's not you who determines it's like when it's finished you feel that it's finished and that's the day that it's finished it, it's not like a like Give me five paintings. I mean, how do you do that? Like that, all this is all these are ridiculous ideas that come from the other side of society, which is all about you know numbers and and figures and and and, and boxing things and getting things mm. structured and all that stuff. But artists cannot do that. They have to be working and doing stuff, and that's mm. it. And that's it. With no. Yeah. With no considerations. Yeah. There's certainly always a challenge to um, being creative on tap is, is particularly hard. Um, and for those of you who just joined, welcome to the conversation I'm speaking to internationally um, renowned artist <clears throat> Christian Hook just had a documentary made by Sky Arts about his work, Painting the Invisible, which we are going to get onto. I really, really quickly want to talk to you about Sky Arts, um, Portrait Artist of the Year, which you won in 2014 with your stunning painting of Sir Ian McKellen. Um, You painted so many incredible people since then. How was that experience and and kind of- That was a great, that was a great experience, but um, but unlike unlike what people think, you know, um, it didn't really do. Uh, it what it what it did do was like you know it showed you know that I had you know some kind of you know talent on the spot you know I could do yeah. stuff on the spot but it didn't do uh, what people think like you know that after if you win I mean many people have won Sky Arts after me and um, mm. if you look at their careers and stuff it's not it's not something that actually does anything you know like. Uh, you get like a, a week or two window where people are interested in looking and then it's gone. You know, like a, so it wasn't that. But it, I won like a, after that and before that, I won like, um, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 awards, in, international ones that were much bigger than that, you know. And, um, and uh, I tried to do lots of other things uh, uh, related to my work, you know, where I worked with people that were interesting. I tried, you know, some documentaries. I tried to do lots of things. And... Um, some of them failed and and every now and then one would you know would, would would do something and then and then i would take that one to the limit you know and uh, mm-hmm. and so i never really work for the gallery uh, or for anything i'm always like working for to develop my work in different ways you know not 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 just in painting mm-hmm. but at the end you know i have one show a year and there everything that i've done outside you know makes makes the, the collective idea 
come together. And that, I think, is, um, is you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a cool part. Fantastic. I, um, I really want to get on to talking about your, um, your work, Painting the Invisible, because I think yeah. that... Um, for obvious reasons, the, the Sky documentary yeah. that came out in October. Um, for those yeah. of you who haven't seen it yet, um, firstly, definitely go and see it. Um, but yeah. Christian essentially followed the works of um, international uh, scientists, um, global scientists, and Nobel Prize winning scientists, and yeah. through who each had their different perspectives on life and, and the way that we interact as humans, our energy. And essentially what Christian did through observing a couple, Dan and Dora, managed to create a body of work through the lens of each different scientific theory. Um, I mean, these are amazing. These are, you really are painting the invisible. You're painting the intangible. You're really taking the visual and challenging yeah. the way that we see art. You're challenging the visual. You're challenging representations of art. It's, it's an exceptional body of work. Um, I've, yeah. I've been fortunate enough to see it Thank in the you. flesh. And uh, I'd, love, <clears throat> I'd love for you to talk about it. You can talk about it much better than I can. So... Um, Yes, please tell us so, about this project. So basically, um, so basically, we can only see uh, five percent of reality. You know, our eyes only capture five percent of matter. The other ninety-five percent are invisible to the eye. And um, I was thinking, you know, I'm, I, I read quite a lot of uh, spiritual books and uh, you know ideas. I, I think that the, our whole our whole life, you know. We never ever experience anything outside of ourselves, and I mean this like as even when you're looking at something, you you only see that thing at the back of your cornea. You don't really see the actual thing in front of you. You, don't, you never see that. When someone touches your skin, you feel you don't feel the other person's hand. You feel your skin, like it's your feeling. So everything happens. The whole experience of life, not one thing happens outside of yourself. So therefore, you know, um, I was really interested in this 95%, which, which probably, you know, makes some sense of the 5% that we see. And um, I know that all the greatest artists in the past have worked with, um, with a scientist, you know, one, with one, you know, for, I know Dali did, and like, you know, uh, Picasso had a scientist, uh, Van Gogh was in a group of scientists, and, and all the way till now, to the present, but we live in a in a very special time where we we have you know we have uh, uh, the internet we have like we can connect via Zoom with anybody and that never existed before you know and um, I I think it was the first time that all these Nobel Prize winning pri uh, scientists uh, have got together to help an artist because it, it wouldn't make sense for someone who's studying the universe. Um, a scientist to ever meet the one that's studying teardrops, you know, or the one that's studying the brain or like they, they have their own, you know, they have their own uh, groups and they, they, they don't need to meet for anything. But this idea brought them all together. And um, that was, a, I think, a first time where you have all these top scientists, like, you know, grouping together to see, to try and help to see this other world, you know, to understand it a bit better. And, um, in a way, it was like like you know landing on the moon because it's like the first time that that door of the invisible is opened to be able to paint some of it, and uh, mm -hmm. and the results could have been better. You know, I don't know. Like I just did it, and I'll say, but I, I'm sure that like um. But for me, the important thing wasn't like you know the painting itself. It was it was the concept. It was like the first you know you walk into a space and you try something there. And it was the first time it's open, you know, and uh, that was the exciting thing. And um, I mean, the invisible is everything. And I had to choose like a focal point. So what I chose was uh, these two, these two people, Dan and Dora, who were, who were a couple who had gone through everything, you know, they'd broken up, then they got back together. Um, she had a, a child with someone else before they got back together. And then, you know, they, they were together after 20 years. And then you know, they've gone through lots of things. They became a spiritual couple. Now they do like, uh, they help others with, um, with uh, yoga and ecstatic dance. And they do loads of different things. But um, they had a plethora of emotions that, that you know, of, of experiences that were really good to explore. And um, that's, what I, that's what I did. I, I just, uh, I wanted to see 95%, the other 95% of something. So I decided to focus on what happens between the two of them. You know, mm. that space in between, 
that is more relevant to all of us because we all we live relationships are are not important to us relationships are what is important to the universe itself i mean the spinning of planets are not really important by themselves the reason why they're important is because of the relationship between other planets like the spin of a planet keeps the other planet rotating it's all about relationships that's why relationships are so important to us because we are all the same thing you know and therefore that is the the part that i wanted to discover you know mm. or try and understand a bit better mm, absolutely and the the relationship between science and art you know you you pointed out it is not new at all um but your perspective on it and your presentation of it is, I would definitely say, for example, and when we're talking about the visual representation, you've, you've literally got these paintings which are in oil and a, and a sort of variety of materials. Um, yeah. I know you use light boxes, you use um, canvas yeah. in some types, um, you use a kind of a real sort of multitude of mediums, but then yeah. you've got this extension, you've got this extension of the painting um, to yeah. one side, which I understand is to do with the fact that we can never see uh, yeah. a whole perspective of anything in science or yeah. art so um and i love the fact that you've got this continuation of the work outside yeah. of itself which is really really interesting um, and i haven't seen I anything love, like um, that. thank you i love uh, uh I'm, i i love japanese art it's like my favorite japan it's because they they really uh try and uh they try and uh, uh um show like you know, the the the, the greatest things with the, the least with the least information possible, and um, it's almost like you know trying to say the most with with one sentence, you know, and uh, that happens in songs. It's like it's like the most poetic way of putting something across. Like you do it in one go, but it's like you know it's got so much in it, and yet it's just a sentence, you know, and. Um, there's a garden, I can't remember what the name of the artist is right now, because I've got dyslexia and I forget half of the things, but like, but, um, but there's an artist that did this garden, it was a stone garden in Japan, and it had like, I think it was 15 stones, and it looked like, you know, it looked like the, the stones looked like uh, clouds at the beginning, and these rocks would come out from them, and then it looked like, and another part of the day, it looked like the sea crashing onto these mountains because they had moss on them and a lot of stuff but you could never see the 15 at the same time i think if you walk around to the other side then you can see the other 14 but the last one there is missing and basically you can never understand or, or see anything i mean even our imagination works with the same laws of of nature so nature's laws work even in our thoughts so for example if i if i tell you can you imagine uh, i don't know something ridiculous if can you imagine a boat or a ship made of feet right made of human feet right you could probably imagine it, even if it's ridiculous but your brain can see yeah. it. you can see mm. a boat made but if i ask you right can you imagine a plane or something that doesn't have an underside you probably can't imagine it you cannot your imagination cannot do something that has a top part without a bottom part. It is because it is not possible in nature. Like, so everything that's got one side has to have the other side. And that's how everything works. You know, it like, um, uh, and uh, I, I've forgotten the point of the question. No, Sorry. the point is about, no, is about perspective and, and our imagination is really limiting um, as yeah. well uh, because we can only see a certain amount. We yeah. can only imagine a certain amount. Science is the same. You know, it's um, so much of it is about ideas and creativity, just like an art. Um, yeah. But of course, you can only really focus on one perspective um but yeah. of course there are multiple oh, sorry so so the, so the boxes really are kind yeah. of that idea because the science inside the paintings comes out on the box but the box because it's in relief um all the paint work there uh, mm -hmm. the shadows that it creates are are not on my control or anybody else wherever the light sources are you have shadows flying in the room which like are not part of the work. Oh, of you know, course, anymore. like when they're on the wall, yeah. so as in, yeah, yeah, yeah. so that the yeah, lighting yeah. quite literally so, so changes. Boxes, so, yeah. yeah. So wherever you put the light, suddenly there's bits of, 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 of shadows on the floor or on, on another wall and they're out of my control. You know, they, they just appear like wherever the light, and, but they're part of the work, you know. So in, to a certain degree, there's always one part which I don't understand 
or is within my within my control. You, I can never see the whole thing from one place, and that is that is the you know you can't understand anything fully, even if you're looking at someone and studying it studying them all the time there's always the back of them that you cannot see you know so you can never see everything you can never understand everything so that's part of the idea you know in in the work yeah absolutely i think i think also you know taking it a little bit further everyone will also have a different experience with those boxes because and we're we're quite literally talking about boxes in relief at the side um of what is you know a stunning piece of artwork yes glass boxes at the side Um, and what literally that then means is that nobody else will have the same experience because everyone will a be seeing it through their own different lens will also be seeing a different time of day and will come with their own perspectives we all come with our own perspectives to every interaction and engagement and um creative exercise anyway so our viewership will always be different um kind of an interesting thought really that that no one can see your artwork the same um and i and i love the way that you've played on that and and in science as well science is considered to be something that is um final and um decisive um Uh, but actually a lot of it is interpretation there's still things we don't know and we're finding out and um i'm sure uh, you know i've spoken to scientists i find the yeah i find the science really interesting because because the, the people at the forefront of science that are studying something now mm. like it's got so crazy really that it goes further than your imagination can understand i mean if you look at any of them and what they're mm. doing they're studying magic stuff you know like yeah. things that you cannot i like they're impossible to understand so mm. you don't need to invent anything like the reality is much more bizarre mm. than than the limitations of our imagination. You know, our imagination can only go as far as as, as things we've seen or understand. Mm. So even the descriptions, really, even mm. in the Bible, even in any text, even in religious texts, the descriptions of heaven and hell and this and the other, they always have things that you've seen before. It's like, you know, mm. there's fire, there's like hooves, there's like uh, horns, there's like wings. We've seen it all before. So. It all comes from what we've seen. So our, our imaginations are limited by, by our, our, you know, our senses, you know, and, um, but science, it goes mm-hmm. way beyond that, you know, and um, that's why I find it exciting. Mm-hmm. But I'm still, I'm still like, you know, even when I go to universities or when I go to give a talk or whatever uh, into any place, I'm still baffled by this. Like two human beings, right, sit down for a coffee and then they talk about all these things that they've seen, that they're excited about, that this happened, that the other happened, that can you believe this, can you believe that? And then, and then they get up and they draw a pepper or like an onion <laughs> or like a seascape, you know, like, or a mountain or a dog. Like, why don't you? Do you mean it doesn't do this? justice to the, to the interactions you know, we're having? They have like all these exciting things that they're talking about and then they go back to the studio and they paint a portrait. Like, it doesn't make sense. Like, you know, that, that, that part is the part that I think that in education has to be like kind of broken because everything is art. Every, every, the way you speak can be art. Like the, we live every room when you, we sit down in a room and we think that, you know, that all these great people that have created stuff have died, but, mm. but we live inside their imagination. I mean, a room was invited, invented by someone. The light bulb was invented by someone. The chair where you're sitting, the road, the street, every single thing around us was invented by a hypersensitive. Mm. And we live inside their minds still. So, of course, they're not dead. We're living inside their imagination. Mm. And we don't realize this. We think that creativity is like painting still life and doing a sculpture. I mean, it's so... It's such a a misguided idea that that's why I think that many people think, oh, they're great artists, actually, but they they give up because they cannot draw a picture. I mean, who cares if you can't, you know, there's so many ways of of, of exploring how to how to release this sensitivity somehow. And as long as it as long as it uh, you can share it in any way, you know, with other people where it can resonate, even if it's in, I don't know, making people laugh is an art, you know, like there's so many ways of exploring it, but, you know, in school, it's divided by logic. Unfortunately, unfortunately, 
the intellect takes the, a primordial role in everything. People are applauded because they can remember a lot of facts and this and the other. But actually, the intellect is a dissection tool and it dissects things, unfortunately. And when you dissect something, you lose, really, you lose the, 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 the essence. I mean, if, if you cut a human being into segments and you start looking at it, like, you know, the best bit of the person was before it was untouched when they were, you cannot cut up like, you know, cuteness. You cannot cut up like mm -hmm. someone who's funny. You cannot cut. So all the real important things mm -hmm. about someone, you can't dissect them. They're impossible. If you dissect, you ruin them. So, so the way that everything is, uh, you know, try uh, the, the, the system we live in is so much, you know, about, making things into boxes and competitions and, and putting things into some kind of organized box. That's impossible. Like, you know, you've got to go and play like a child, mm -hmm. you know, just go out there and like, you know, just do whatever. And from there, just develop something. And if it's meant to be, you know, if, you, if other people are meant to like it, well, that's great. But if it does, it's not that you're still doing what you wanted. So if you want to be an artist, be an artist, do all the stuff you like. And then like, you know, but don't be an artist for money. Then you're not, then you're a businessman. If you want to be an artist, you have to go mm. out there and have fun and do what you do. And then your mm. chances anyway are a lot higher, you know, because you're doing something that is real. You know, people don't like, and like, you know, mm. people hate, like, you know, everybody hates a load of nonsense. You know, you, you want to see someone that's doing something authentic in some way, you know? So mm. that's why we travel to places to see like, you know, how, I don't know, how people live in different countries, what they do. People travel to see the real bits, you know? So um, that's what I think, you know? We spoke about this before, um, uh, about how the world is really, um, spits a certain type of person you know the categories are really really helpful because humans in themselves are, ju are just so complicated that actually it's quite overwhelming when you meet a, a, even one person that has so many facets and um qualities that you can't possibly grapple with all of them let alone the billions of people there are so actually categorization does serve a purpose but um you're quite right that creative people really um are often uh, criticized for creating outside the box um and i really like that you have not only championed that way of uh behaving for those people listening that are kind of struggling to fit into those defined parameters of you know yeah. conventional society but also your physical work is actually outside the box um and that's what we were talking about with your painting the invisible so you are practicing what you preach quite literally <laughs> um what what was the reaction to this exhibition um i mean I have my yeah, own opinions, yeah. which I've shared with everyone. But um, but yeah. were, were you? Did people understand what was going on? Did they? Yeah, they all. They all saw the it? film. We went to the cinema first, watched the, uh, watched the film uh, and uh, the documentary, and then and then we went to the exhibition. So you know they had already seen the whole thing, you know, and uh, uh, the 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 documentary is on Sky now, so you can watch it there. And then uh, I think there's uh, a few videos on YouTube on someone explaining you know like each piece or whatever but i think that it was you know obvious once they've seen the film they went in there and they understood it all so it was a uh, but the attendance was like you know it was really ridiculous i couldn't believe it like uh it's always shocking to me you know like uh when people fly from all over the world and like it's just i can't believe it you know and uh, there's queues outside the gallery you know there's like a Sometimes we've had to do like three days or four days of, of, of exhibition because we can't fit enough people in. I mean, I think there was 800 people waiting to go into one of them. And in the cinema, it was like, you know, 200 or 250 people had to be sent out because there was no more room there to, but you know, it's, it's, uh, but I like the fact that, you know, I was still playing. I was still playing, just playing in you know, what I, and every year I do something where I risk it completely, you know, but I, I could, be that nobody's interested but um but i'm, in, but I'm interested I I, I i'm interested in in this stuff and and uh and you know i i've always worked for me really like you know mm. it's just because because that's the whole point like if even if nobody likes what you're doing if you're enjoying it that's why you started like you have to remember that because 
that is everything. Like, mm -hmm. if you want to be an artist, you have to do what you want. That's the whole point. Mm -hmm. And um, and if at the moment you jeopardize that, you become a businessman. Like, you know, and then I have so many artists from university or from whatever, they've just started you know, using a brush or using a whatever, you know. They've just started and they're already asking me about how to sell or how to gallery or how to this or how to money and how to... And I'm thinking like, you know, mm -hmm. The point is, right, that to do it, once you're doing it, like, you know, you, it's almost like a band thinking, like, okay, so what does everybody like? That doesn't work out. You've got to, you know, rock or, or play what you like and, and write so And when all of them really enjoy it and they come up with something cool, then other people might like it. But, you know, you can't ask, what do you want me to write about? What do you want me to play? What do you... That's not it, you know. Like uh, it's I capitalism. Think it, it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, but if you want, if you want money, you know, if you want, just get a job and like, you know, and then in your spare time do it. But but do something that means something to you, like you know that 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 you are having fun with. I mean, how boring would it be for someone to eventually, after a lifetime of working, thinking, right, I'm gonna paint that. I'm finally gonna do what I want, and then they sit down and they have to draw bees like with water drops with a little brush right for 200 hours drawing a drop so that people like it i mean mm -hmm. then you never left your job you not really ever did anything that made any sense you know like you've got to mm -hmm. do what you love and that's it that's a whole that's the whole idea and mm -hmm. um that's all i can say you know like uh, yeah. it's whether I, you I get mean... success or not whether you're successful or not it's not up to you whether whether people like it or not, it's not up to you. If you're meant to be successful, if your work resonates with everybody else, like, you know, it'll find its way. You know, it, the work itself will find a way to get somewhere. And if it doesn't, then you weren't meant to be successful. But at least you lived some part of your life doing what you liked. That is priceless. Because <laughs> if you don't do that at some point, when are you going to do it? Like, you know, yeah. that's the whole thing, you know? So. You make so much sense in terms of um, in in everything you're saying sounds um, incredibly scary. I imagine to quite a few people, like <laughs> really throwing yourself into something is daunting and scary, especially as a creative person. This, and especially as our society is geared towards capitalism. But um, in in the kind of in the kind of beautiful chaos of um, of ideas and what you're saying, it makes perfect sense that you should be doing what feels authentic. Um, of course we should be right. We only get one shot. Um, yeah. So Christian, you've just had a documentary made about you. I mean, where next? What is the next step for you? You're currently in Gibraltar uh, where the weather is yeah. a million times better than here. Yeah. <laughs> um, another body so, of work, another exhibition. No, What's... no, no, no. Now I, I'm, I'm finishing like a music album that I started not long ago. I've uh, written songs for many people before and I've just done this uh, new album now. But we're just about to release, and um, oh. but apart from that, I'm I'm doing. Um, so, I've spoken to Sky TV, and then uh, they had a, an interview with, uh, sorry, a meeting with Netflix, and they were thinking of, um, you know, they they asked me to do, you know, basically I have a kind of a free card to do what I like, you know. I I was doing what I liked anyway. Like even even recording this was a nightmare because the directors were with me and. They didn't know what's, what's going to happen. We just went there and that's it. It was like, mm -hmm. and now what? And I said, and now we'll interview the people, the, the scientists. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just draw something. Mm -hmm. And then they were like, so it was so difficult to, to plan because they could only plan the place. That's it. Like the rest was just happening, you know? And, uh, but now they've kind of <laughs> liked it and they've got used to that kind of working. And they, they said, so... Um, I think there's a, this group. Don't disclose called, anything uh, you can't disclose, by the way. I yeah, don't no, wanna, it's okay. I don't yeah, want to get anyone in trouble. <laughs> called, uh, um, this group called Oceana that's got like, you know, um, quite a few celebrities, like, you know, I think Harrison Ford and, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and a few other people are in it. And basically, I saw this program on uh, David Attenborough did uh, called uh, Breaking Point. And uh, and basically it oh, says yeah, that I mean, yeah we we are we are like you know in in we're we're almost in the limits of of what this what this world can sustain before it all becomes a nightmare you know for 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 all humans 
And um, I think I'm going to work on a on my next uh, project or documentary is going to be um, based on that, you know, like, um, and hopefully I'll be working with some of these people to, to try and do something um, to, to improve, you know, improve these, these things, you know, find or, 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 you know, via art, we can, art is a powerful thing. Mm -hmm. And um, we can do lots of things via that, you know, that, that are not possible in any other way, you know? So, um, you know, it's just like, if I, if I, if, if, if with my help, you know, there's a little bit of, a little bit of extra help in one corner of it only, it's enough, man. I did that, you know, if it's got more, then great. But the attempt is if everybody does a little bit, you know, that probably we can do something, you know, because uh, that I think it's an important subject and, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that needs, you know, attention and it's interesting as well. It's something which is an interesting thing. Like, you know, how did we, that we're just like these little things walking around, do so much, you know? How did we do all this to, to, to and um, it's something uh, interesting to investigate, you know? So I don't know what I'm gonna do or anything, but I'll just go also, and start, yeah? Also something that needs to be approached from multitude of angles, right? Like we can't just rely on science to keep um, telling us the same things we already know. We can't rely on, of course you know, um, no. politics yeah. to, to help. We, yeah. all, we all need to be doing yeah. different things. So um, I guess we're gonna wait I think and see. That, I think that, you can yeah. save the world with your artwork. No, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> talking, for example, talking, talking and talking and talking, or science will only affect or resonate with a certain type of person, mm. you know, or, or for, with, with a group. So I think that the message or the ideas have to come from different places, you know, the same ideas, but like, you know, they have to be, uh, you know, for more emotional people, they have to be poetic. If not, they don't understand it. They only understand it emotionally. For other people, they understand it like by reading. For other people, they understand it through music. But so I think that between all of us, if everybody does something, you know, like in a different way, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to make sure that we do something, you know, if not like, it, it's it's a, it's a, it's an interesting thing to look at, you know, and um, and that's what I think I'll do mm. next after a, a, quite a long break, which I yeah need. yeah I think you right. need a rest. You've been you've been yeah. taking over the world. I've been at it for, for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but also something that means something to you. Again, practicing what you preach, something that means a lot to everyone, really. So um, yeah. so yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do next. As I'm sure everyone is that's listening. Um, yeah. Christian, thank you so much for talking to me thank today. Thank you for having me, and um, it's been a pleasure. Um, it's been a, it's been such a pleasure, and I and I think you've said um, not just about art, but about life. I think you've you've, you've really sort of um, wise words have been said. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, thank you. So uh, yes, thank you so much, everyone, for listening to um, to live with art, Christian. It's just been so wonderful, and. Um, Keep doing what you're doing. Everyone absolutely adores you and your work. We've had a million waves, a million likes. Mm -hmm. uh, people are people are big fans, and and it's obvious why. So thank you so much. And um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'll join me in two soon. weeks for live with art. Bye, Christian. Bye, 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 bye. bye. <laughs> thank you so much for listening to live with art. I hope. I mean, how could you not? have um, been captivated by what Christian was saying. Absolutely fantastic artist, um, a fantastic person as well. Really insightful things to say, incredible work, so talented. I think he just oozes talent. You can really feel it when you, when you, um, when you speak to him. Um, if you do have the opportunity to watch the Sky Arts documentary, I would. Painting the Invisible, definitely check it out. Um, and if you have the chance to see Christian's work in the flesh, also do that. Cannot recommend it enough. It's an experience in itself. Um, thank you so much again for listening to Live With Art. I've been Anna Gammons and I will see you again in two weeks time for another episode. Have a lovely weekend and a lovely Friday. Thank you so much.